Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome you all back to Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live from our tropical exotic paradise in Honolulu, Hawaii. That is in the center of everything. That's true. Uh, recently also strong winds. So That's we were, right. Last show we were saying we're just uh, past uh, Hurricane Lane, but now we can say we're in Hurricane Jebby, but that's not us, that's in Japan. That's, that's right. one over. And I think there's Gordon coming mm -hmm. to the golf course. That's exactly and, and right. There might be Norman coming that's to us. That's exactly. Right? So it's hurricane season it, throughout the world. It is, it is. So how we escaped the last one, first picture please, is a compilation of some goodies from you that you took. Yeah, yeah. Well, what you know, we're very vulnerable to hurricanes, and hurricanes not only do damage to the natural environment, as you can see by the fallen banana trees, but they also damage buildings like the picture, the small insert picture of the Coco Palms Hotel, mm -hmm. badly damaged in 1991's Hurricane Iniki and still not rebuilt. And then, of course, we had to do all this very quick boarding up, and we lost all the gas supplies because everybody filled up. So and this emphasizes how fragile we are and how vulnerable we are. And you said everything evolves around fossil fuel yeah. or not, right? Yeah, no fossil fuel, no it's, civilization. Uh, wow, yeah, whatever civilization means. I mean, that's sort of it's debatable. True. But, that's true. That's but true. Again, um, but uh, the, the hurricane, another hurricane actually hit us. And oh, that's yes. Hurricane Howard. Let's look at that one. That's yeah, it, you can say it's it Hurricane hard, Howard. Right? It, it hit hard. us hard, but it's actually not a real hurricane. Oh, it's it's not. the Howard Hughes Corporation. Oh, okay. And yes, they've done some. Uh, they've made some alterations in Honolulu, and what you see here is uh, the former Ward Warehouse building. Uh -huh when it was being demolished. Yeah, and you know, way back we were sitting in there not that yes. long ago appreciating yes, it we because were. it was a very easy breezy, inclusive yes. yep. for all the people, you know, place. Walkable. Now it's gone. Now it's so gone. I think this hurricane here on CIS caused some pretty collateral damage. It certainly did. The uh, next picture shows it from another beautiful view that that's you right. captured. And that's the end of the Ward Warehouse after Hurricane Howard passed through. Yeah, yeah. And we were pointing out the little picture in there is a previous show where we were comparing the architects of the former. This is uh, Steve Au here at yeah. his treehouse, by the way, in yes. Manikai, which he now sold as well. And he's, you know, casual guy, easy breezy, local boy, and the what's was supposed to take over here is by this uh, star architect uh, general man richard meyer who yeah. uh, sits there all tied up and yes. so uh, next picture his architecture was supposed to be this is referencing a previous show when we had will bruder coming stopping by and we could not not show this to him he was he was pretty quiet yeah. in, in you know um, in the eye of what what he saw there as as very sort of hermetic very inclusive uh, sorry very exclusive very little inclusive um, and um, that was just before the summer a couple of weeks Correct. before the summer and this was, was the ward warehouse site it, that was, it was supposed yeah. to have these that, two high rises it was supposed to be gateway tower that's right, right? that's gateway correct towers. correct with one small space small open space between the two mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. and this is the, the the top right is that showroom that howard hughes has yeah. in the ibm building and aussie post ibm building yes with this pretty surreal where they put this sort of wallpaper <laughs> uh, in front of the windows so it's sort of you know as if you're looking out of your of your high-rise uh, apartment as if and all that glass, you know, uh, there is some sort of whimsy, sort of gesturing of some shading, but not really. Not yet. Uh, this Correct. Is, this is a fossil fuel hog. And it's a glass um, box. That's a glass box that's by a star architect, so it's kind of nice and clean and lean and mean, but it is fossil. So that's why, you know, Will being a very environmentally sensitive, his uh, Phoenix Library is a masterpiece of living in balance with the elements, mm -hmm. with the natural elements out there in the desert. Yeah, which is he hot. Looks, he looks pretty puzzled. So I was a next picture because over the summer I thought you were playing a late <laughs> April Fool's <laughs> play with me when you sent me this article. No, and I said like no way. You wrote this, right? No, I did not. And you were Martin had gone to Germany for the summer, and this w appeared in the Honolulu Star Advertiser. So I sent it to him. And those two big buildings that we just saw, uh, on which they had spent a total of something like. 
forty million or twenty six million or mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. huge mm -hmm. amount of money, mm -hmm. they've totally dropped. Mm -hmm. And so that whole plan is now up in yeah. the air. We don't know what's going to happen. Or at there. least on a long hold. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and you know, let's zoom into that picture there because um, a next page or next. Uh, yeah. So that that is we read in the article that of course you know now they pull the carpet and yeah. now they're going to propose something new and there's supposedly mm -hmm. a new boss there who uh, is celebrating his genius idea of making this a park which yeah. we love yes in the tropics and vegetation yeah. but then there's something that puzzles us so we're starting to do a little uh, cultural research on that and history on that, that is an elevated walkway. Correct. And it reminds you of when were they first introduced? Well, back in the 1970s, when Kaka'ako was first being to, uh, mm -hmm. proposed for a massive redevelopment, mm -hmm. there was a very old idea, actually it comes from the 1930s, mm -hmm. in which all traffic is on the ground level, mm -hmm. and then all pedestrian traffic is mm -hmm. one elevated one mm -hmm. level up. Mm -hmm. So that's what was being discussed back then, and now we see it's returned with mm -hmm. this current uh, statement from the Howard yeah, Hughes Corporation. Yeah. And I have to say, you know, looking some years back when I started my full-time academic career in the U.S., there was a really hot project that everyone yeah. loved, and that's the next picture. Right. And that is a place you just recently visited, that city. That yes. Is that is the High Line in New York City. Mm -hmm. And that originally was an elevated train track that was just used in a small area of Manhattan for moving material between the docks and factories. Mm -hmm. And it was for trains. Um, it went out of use, I think, in the 1950s, and then the structure sat there falling apart. And instead of demolishing it, it mm -hmm. got turned into the High Line Park redeveloped so that it is a walking park that has these yeah. little elements yeah. of trees and stuff in it. Became like a very hip project, yep. Architects Disco, the name is pro Appropriate, program, I yes. guess. Uh, Diller and Scofito is the architect's <laughs> couple's name. And uh, But v more recently, actually, this year, next picture, I found this article on the web, which sort of sheds a little different light on that very mm -hmm. sort of feeling very inclusive project, which right. is for the people, everyone can walk there. Right. But all of a sudden you start to see, hmm, maybe that was, you know, at least is a welcome side effect of the High Line that all of a sudden, you know, being hip means yes. some, you know, hotshot people want to live right. along that. They do. So that reminds us again of, of that part of Kaka'ako, yes. High Land Value, how yes. it's wanting to develop. Yes. So maybe these skywalks are, you know, in that sense kind of, of the like High Line, that. sort of like elevating the way, you know, towards yeah. sooner or later. And, and our, our elevated train line is going to go through that area as well. That one too, yeah. And maybe that one, there's always budget drama and crisis. Oh, maybe yeah. that one ends up like a ruin as well and vines grow <laughs> over. You know, well, we'll see. Knows, we'll knows. see. But uh, next picture is uh, talking exclusive and, um, you know, being hip. This is us. We made number 23 in the global ranking of the most livable city. And this is better than it sounds because this is the first or the only American city yeah. that's among cities from all over the world. Vienna, right. by the way, hit number one, never mind. And we were <laughs> discussing the criteria, you know, yeah. of that, but um, that's a whole other story. Correct. So we are, according to this uh, sort of um, survey, whatever here, it is, survey, we are the most livable city. Uh, American city in the world right. and the question that we increasingly raise is for whom is right. it for we also hit record high it was a title of the star of the Tizer tourists yeah we have the most tourists ever coming to our place oh, yeah but what happens to some people who have been living here before as your one yeah. for example and I recently joined what what where do we end up and That's next right. picture is where i literally end up yes uh is is this project that we ran a show uh way back the, uh, the uh, waikiki grant that and the, the little picture is is the original condition from the mid-century where there was a little tree and this is a picture the big picture is a picture i took because this tree is essential or i should say existential to my neighbor vanda who lives on the other side of the hallway who has you know, birds mm -hmm. in her place and big parrots. Mm -hmm. She needs the the the, 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 the view free, of the tree, the view of the trees, and the other you know buddy birds. Yes, out yes, so want to look really, at it too. This is really essential. So we want to look into, but also Waikiki Grand. Uh, next picture is one morning, one recent morning. There was a big <laughs> show going on outside. <laughs> 
And they started to film, which they had, as you told me before, at, at your place, up at your guy's house. This is the reboot or the remake of Magnum PI. And uh, we found this trailer here and um, pretty much uh, screenshotted um, the house. Because the little picture in there in the middle is us. We were talking about the um, coolest commercial classic, the Alamana yeah. Tower, and yeah. where it was all featured yeah. in Elvis Blue Hawaii in, of course, a Y50, but also with Tom Selleck way right. back uh, there. So we're looking, of course, for architecture. And, and as you told me, you know, Tom Selleck is obviously gone yeah. because he's too old. Right. I, I was under the impression his Ferrari made it, but you no. told me watching the, 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 the trailer, trailer. No, the, the original Ferrari it. was mm -hmm. blown up. Okay. So now they've got a new red Ferrari. Okay. And they've got a new house, too. And, and what happened to the old one? Well, the old house, the real house yeah. that they filmed the original one, has been wiped out. It's been demolished. So I think that's another show, right? That's another oh. show, but I think the other crazy thing is that that's a fantasy view. That's I, not a real house. I, that, that's I, special effects. All righty. Well, so uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty crazy. It is. So let's move on. Yeah. And a uh, little review of last next picture, please. Uh, this is from last show with our tropical tutor Bill, who uh, runs the architecture school with us. And he's a big fan of movies, so I introduced him and you to a uh, must-watch. And yeah. I made this the viewing assignment for my current okay. studio. And this is uh, Alexander Payne, who is the maker of The Descendants, which we probably all know, and we better do it if we don't yeah. watch it. And um, somehow, uh, half through the movie, um, where from this sort of shrunk-down, idealized middle-class mm -hmm. America, uh, still some fall through the net yeah. and don't make it, even yeah. though they're small, but their problems don't go away. No, they don't. So they put them in these buses and then they drive by this sort of no one's land, as you can see, and there you can see Aloha Gardens is the project development there. Right. So something must have stuck with him mm -hmm. as sort of this illusion of paradise. Yes, exactly. That's sometimes sort of in... In, in not matching reality, right? right? And, and they wanted to, there was, what that billboard is indicating is that there was going to be something called Aloha Gardens yeah, and yeah. it never happened. No, no, so it was a no, utopia no. they exactly. never created. There you go, there you go. So, um, and interesting is really in the movie, at the bottom left is like that city outside of the city um, uh, is where, where the action is, where life is, where empathy is, where mm -hmm. humanity and humility is, where mm -hmm. people talk. Everything that middle class America lacks, suburbia lacks, that. they have there. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great, it's a must, uh, must see movie for, for architects and architectural enthusiasts. And it, it really points out this sort of what's important, I think, in any kind of architecture, but increasingly, you know, more than ever, because we design from outside in more than ever, yes. is this inside out approach. Right. Right. And we want to sort of now turn over to the last third of the show, which is going to bringing back a couple of these uh, polemic propositions yeah. in saying, hey, you know, here are some things that we, we might want to need on the island and we might, something that Howard, you know, the hurricane right. might want to have on yeah. their development. Which is relevant for discussions of hurricanes. And want to do maybe instead of what Correct. they just dropped, right? Correct. So let's jump in. Next picture. Uh, so this is... Jungleism. Jungleism, and I think what we're going to what we're going to be looking at is some of the projects and some of the work that Martin's students have done in various classes at UH. And jungleism is the idea of building along the lines of how a jungle actually forms itself. And as you pointed out, there's a lot going on in jungles. There's a lot of livability. There's there's comfort. There's protection, mm -hmm. and yet it's also open to the elements. And so the big picture shows a tangle of how tree branches. And on the bottom, we see a little girl who is hanging out with one of the mock-ups that was mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. at uh, your, for one of your classes, yeah. which, if I remember correctly, I was present at. Next picture, I right. think, proves that. There I am, sitting in the background and next to next Neil to Abercrombie, former, go. former, former governor. Mm -hmm. um, and this is this is your tree texture art. This is your tree texture class. Well, it's sort of segueing into tree texture. We can go to the next picture. This is still jungleism no, here. This is jungleism. Okay, pardon me. Is, That's what I meant to say. Looking, yeah, we're not there this yet. This is looking into the fabric, correct, so to speak. Correct. As once again, this is not 
traditional city planning right. where we like make a master plan and we feel like we're God, right? Yeah. We're we're in the jungle. We're like Correct. Tarzan and Jane. Correct. That reminded me about the, 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 the elevated walkway. You know, through a jungle you do it like Jane and Tarzan. And you you swing, swing, right? Yeah. And you don't walk on a walk. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's a fantasy And in fact view. we had ideas here that you zip line from one building to right. the next because right. the clue is here next picture. And this is taking out just sort of a, a bundle or a bunch of these, correct? Just from a from a larger fabric because yeah. the, what really fascinates me that only here in our privileged, relatively mild tropical climate yes. of Hawaii, yes, if we uh, let buildings, you know, follow the same yep. bioclimatic code what nature does yeah. as for example a bamboo grove that you like as yes. the best example yeah. from yeah nature, so the, right? the and one of the things and you pointed this out to me a bamboo grove is a very interesting structure mm. because each one of those bamboo stalks is very flexible mm -hmm. and yet in a grove they all protect each other mm -hmm. and i just was watching uh, hurricane jebby mm -hmm. on on youtube last night moving all this bamboo grove mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. and it was staying intact mm -hmm. even as it was being mm -hmm. thrown around mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that's going on here a, a forest if you will of tall skinny towers yeah, yeah, yeah. functioning in a sort of similar way exactly next picture is showing it in its larger context surrounding so these are the same ones sort of embedded in that larger in that larger jungle and again, they, they get as close as possible yeah. to shade each other from the mm -hmm. sun, primarily, and the wind. Mm -hmm. And they are as loose as they need to be at the same time to let air and rain mm -hmm. and allow, still allow privacy. Correct. However, we see a lot of um, sort of greenery in them. So yes. greenery in a jungle, jungle is very diverse, right? You've got yeah. all sorts of species and, and animals do. of you small do. kinds and people. But you don't really recognize them, right? Because the jungle is very discreet. It's, and it's also a, an entity of its own self. A absolutely, absolutely. So next picture shows it's in its, in its macro. Right, right. And this setting is what's now downtown Honolulu. The, uh, we're looking at the site of Aloha Tower and Honolulu Harbor. And this is the sort of idealized redevelopment, including some of the existing buildings, but also the forest of tall, skinny towers like a bamboo grove. Mm -hmm. And they spill out just like mangroves, and then they go to the to water. The ocean. They want that. That's right. And that way, you basically um, talking the, the the catchy term, you know, has been for some years has been resilience. Yes. Right. How do, can we make ourselves more resilient right. towards? Right. And it mostly leads. Okay, we basically fortify ourselves. Right. 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 But but this is a different approach, and look into that uh, through some individual sort of um, declinations of individual uh, plants here. And mm -hmm. the next picture, once again, they all start out again. The, the methodology is inside out. Um, I ran the show way back about this particular project um, with Jeff, who is one of our my neighbors in my hood. Mm -hmm. And he's an urban nomad. Mm -hmm. and Correct. Other people right. call him a homeless, which right, I right, avoid. Right. Right. And so this is meant for all of us, including Jeff. And it's basically, um, you know, inhabiting pretty much a raw structure. Yes. Uh, providing the necessary for the protection for the sun and the rain. You bring vegetation in, and that's pretty much it. What what, right. what else do you need? Right. Um, and so that that's what that is doing. And the next picture is then showing how that might look uh, architecturally, and you can see some sort of tectonical pattern. And what this originally was is cargo steel, avoiding yeah. to say shipping containers. Right. And they, they got a sunscreen put on because containers mm -hmm. get hot. And there's some Elbesia, you know, slats. We mm -hmm. didn't show about slats. And reuse. Yes, we and, have. And so we did that. And But next picture, which is also a permanent background picture whenever at the beginning or at the end, vegetation again grows around that mm -hmm. and basically, you know, makes it, diffuses it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and basically dissolves it. Right. In, in itself. And what I like about the shipping containers is that, pardon me, the, the shipping steel, mm. is that each one is a, is a unit and all of them are identical, but you can stack them and move them around in different ways. And there mm -hmm. have been projects like that, and mm -hmm. one of them is in Las Vegas, which mm -hmm. I have been to, which mm -hmm. is a commercial development. Yeah. It can be done, it's being done, yeah. and you've got all these containers, we should be using them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So another species here in, in jungleism is the next picture. This is what? This is Primitiva 1, 
And Primitivo 1 is a circular tower, and it's got a lot of open space, and it has areas for people to meet, it has areas for plants to grow, it has areas for people to exchange things, barter, buy things. Um, and one of the crucial aspects of this is that it is an open structure, and mm -hmm. that's relevant for when we talk about hurricanes. And as well as the top, as we can see here, we're, and as well at the bottom, next picture, at the base, it's an open farmer's market. And then, so these are the public or semi-public areas. Next picture is the private one. And that's interesting here because we had this discussion about resilience yeah. and how does that actually work. And both of us, we had to admit we're not sailors. Yes. But as much as we can imagine being out there, yeah. it makes little sense to basically sew a different layer of fabric onto your sail when there's a storm. You've got to bring that sail down. That's as much as get we it can out of the way. as non-sailors out there in the that's storm. That's right. right. That's right. So here, Primitiva 1 doesn't have traditional fenestration, doesn't have glass. Correct. It has an elevated floor that's a side effect of flipped generic Correct. double T's. Right. So all your belongings, uh, belongings go under the floor, and yourself, you go into these cone-shaped cores, which comprise as well the restrooms and the bathrooms, and that's where you ride out the storm. Correct. These are made your, out of solid, that's your protection. Yeah. These are yeah. These are made out of solid log timber, so they're strong, sturdy, and protect you. Yes. While the storm goes through. Goes through. And I was just telling you that last night I was watching a video of mm. Hurricane Irma last mm -hmm. year going over Naples, Florida mm -hmm. with its most maximum winds. And one of the places where the guy was shooting from was an open parking mm -hmm. garage. Mm -hmm. So the air, and here's the wind and the rain yeah, yeah. blasting through, yeah. but it's not destroying the structure mm -hmm. because it can yeah. pass through. That brings back a memory of the beginning of the year show that was called... Post petroleum people's parking exactly reusing adaptive yeah. reuse of these parking structures right. and not having much to do with them just inhabit them right, right. exactly and so uh, next picture is only then sort of it starts to look like that and once again here. Um, uh, here's Primitiva, been put in front of the uh, Alamoana Hotel, for example, mm -hmm. uh, also on top of the mall. Mm -hmm. to basically, somewhere all these you know, low-paid labor people Correct. have to live somewhere, and, and rather than there. trucking them out, or have them drive out way west to Waianae or Makaha, and then being stuck in traffic in the morning, having to start at 3, they might as well live in there. Mm -hmm. And this way more organic structure, yeah. this isn't meant postmodernly, uh, literally, this is figuratively because the nature and the anatomy, as we just explained, of Primitiva is more organic. Mm -hmm. Right. Correct. That's so right. Uh, next picture, uh, yeah, we referenced this before. That means it's camouflaged and hardly noticeable. This mm -hmm. could be out in West Oahu. Here's the campus where DHHL people and students could live in a condensed, Correct. comprised way mm -hmm. to then keep the country country for right. growing food. Or what was the other great suggestions, like algae for fueling yeah. airplanes? Yeah, future, that's right. right, that's right, biofuel. Yeah, right. and only at night, next picture, right. they, would, they would pop up. Right, because the rest of the time you're looking through it mm -hmm. in, to a great extent and or you're looking at the greenery that grows there. Exactly. So last but not at all least, next picture is the third species that is... And that's Primitiva 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, again, this is not a circular building, this is a rectangular building, but again we've got an open plan. You again, Incorporating now a few other things that Primitiva 1 didn't have. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, as you, this is again the living quarters, lots of uh, openness and lots of vegetation. Yeah, very nomadic. You dry your clothes naturally and all these things. You sleep in hammocks. Uh, next picture, which you already pointed out, the anatomy here is different. This is a core and cantilevering out. Right. Uh, and wings, open stairways. So open stairways, lots of exercise people get. And next picture, again, you, you, here's the staircase again, there's but the that's the only sort of iconic performative element because everything else is pretty much camouflaging itself yes. as, as being, you know, texture, architecture, mm -hmm. more than architecture. Right, right. And uh, last picture from that sequence, again, the emerging generation having done a great job here in illustrating that pretty well. 
also introducing the water curtain walls. Right. So there are two ways of sort of protecting these walls. One of them is kind of an open netting, mm -hmm. and you can see that as says crisscross cables, mm -hmm. and then there's also the curtain walls made of falling water. Mm -hmm. And that uh, hydrates, it cools, it also is um, purifying the water. You can reuse water that falls as rainwater. So the whole point was to make these students Think yeah, of yeah. outside the box. Mm -hmm. and, that, and things you can do only in Hawaii. Right, right, where we are lucky. So the final picture is you, the tree hugger. Can uh, we have that? Uh, there he is, the tree yeah. enthusiast, as he was so seen on. you got on... yourself in trouble with the authorities? No, again? I didn't get in trouble with the authorities. A tree fell near my mother's house, and it fell on a truck. And uh, a TV news reporter was there and interviewed me about trees, because mm -hmm. I happened to be standing there looking at the tree that had fallen. Yeah. And they you, called me a tree enthusiast. Yeah, and we were just saying you increasingly look like one. I am growing uh -huh. things out of my face like Spanish moss, like a tree in the south dripping with Spanish moss. And there's a tradition on this island, but we save that for next we'll time. We'll trade that for, yeah, we're talking about Dole later. But, but again, uh, these were some suggestions for Howard Hughes to maybe rethink, yeah. because instead of doing their exclusive luxury development or just doing, as you always say, um, basically decorative green, yeah. they might want to do performative green that it's also inhabitable. Right. Uh, these are some ideas that we throw out. Correct, There's and they seem to be wanting to break out of the box a little bit themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe hard use can then have a meaningful contribution to the real issues on the island here. And uh, along the same lines, but a little different, we want to look at my employer, UH. Yeah. And uh, that's been, we've been in preparation for that for quite a while, did a yes, couple of field trips, and it's probably going to end up being more than one show. I think so. And that is called, referencing to a book by Kobayashi from the 80s, I think, that's yes. called Building the Rainbow. Right. We're going to add to that and saying pretty much uh, superficiality and substance yeah. of UH architecture. Correct. And, so. there, and, and trees play a role there, too. Mm -hmm. We've got we've got nature and buildings, yeah. and we've got a lot of the same things to talk about when exactly. we examine the exactly. UH Manoa campus. We will do. And next week falls on 9/11, so in reference and tribute to the twin towers that came down in New York City, we will uh, look at a building by the same architect Yamazaki here in town and talk to someone who knows this from inside out. So let yourself be surprised. And until then, keep staying easy breezy. Bye-bye.